there you go lovely little common carp probably four or five pound on a bitter cold day just goes to show the effectiveness of bread so let me slip this back and I'll just talk to you about what I'm doing right I'm just going to talk you through my setup for fishing the popped up bread firstly and something I've picked up from fellow guru pen writing I'm using a fluorocarbon leader roughly just under the length of my rod the idea being fluorocarbon sinks really well so it keeps that bit of line around the lead pinned right down on the bottom and prevents any fish from spooking so moving on got a guru mini leg clip snap link swivel in the bottom instead of the normal swivel a it stops it from tangling and b it gives me the ability to quick change my hook length if the need arises something else worth mentioning is lead size got uh, two thirds of an ounce guru mini square lead square pair it's a very small lead for what distance I'm casting the reason being I don't want to sort of spook the fish a lot of people make the mistake at this time of year using a great big lead to cast a long distance and a lead crashing into crystal clear cold water is going to spook fish so good little tip for winter use a smaller lead as you can get away with moving on I've kicked off today popping up the bread about 18 inches so I've got 18 inches of 019 guru engage then I've got a size 12 QM1 hook and quite a longish hair. The reason I've got quite a longish hair is because the bread expands once it's in the water. So although when I first put the bait on the hair looks long for the size of bait, once that bread's been in the water it'll move up the hair and just take up that difference. So the rig extremely simple, doesn't tangle and you know I mean that's that is also important. I'm leaving it out a long time. I need to know the rig's fishing and with this setup I do. So that's the rig. Let me just talk to you about bait. Bait front it couldn't be any simpler. I've literally just got bread and I've got a few different colours of mini pop-up boilie. I'm actually doing something quite different, as in I'm using the two together. So what I'm doing, if I just take a baking needle that I've already loaded, I'm almost creating a boilie sandwich. So I've got a bread disc, sort of eight or ten, eight to ten mil bread disc, a little bit of fluoro yellow pop-up, another bread disc in the, in the middle. The reason I'm using the boilie is two, there's two reasons. Firstly, to add a bit of extra colour. And secondly, to give more buoyancy, one of the problems on a lot of commercials is there's a lot of roach, skimmers, and they all peck at the bread. By putting a little bit of boilie in, I'm just toughening it all up. At least, even if the roach do start pecking at the bread, I can leave it out 15, 20 minutes, even maybe even longer, confident in the knowledge that I've got something on the hair. So it's a great little tip. You know, it doesn't have to be yellow. I can use orange, pink, or if I just want to blend it in, I can use white. So putting it on the hair itself, as I said, I've got quite a long hair. Bait's already on the needle pull it under the hook like so there we go pull it down just a little bait in stop to hold it in place there you go like I said there's quite a big gap there between the actual hook and the bait itself but once that bread's been in the water it will start to expand and that bread will move right up on the back of the hook so I'm actually fishing a relatively short hair so that's the theory. Let's see if we can put another fish on the bank. Another little tip. I've got a lot of open water in front of me today. But as I've already said, the carp are quite spooky. So I don't want to be cast into the extreme boundary of my swim straight away. So what I'm doing, I've probably gone 35, 40 yards. A nice comfortable chuck. But I've probably got another 20 yards of water off the back of that. So it just gives me somewhere later on, if the carp do start to back off, I can follow them into that zone and I'm not pushing them out of my swim. A question I get asked a lot about fishing bread on the lead is how far should you pop it up? Well, there's no golden rule. It's all about experimenting and finding out the depth the fish are sat at them on the day. What I tend to do is, using the Guru's balls, I have a load of hook lengths tied up anything between like three and five foot. So on this spool I've got five foot, on another spool I've got three foot. And then I'll cut them down if needs be. But as a guide, like today, I mentioned I've got, I'm popping up straight off the lead, 18 inches off the bottom. I'm probably casting into like eight, 10 foot. I mean, 18 inches in that depth for me, that's a good starting point. But if I was getting liners and indications and no bites, then I'll start playing around. And at times it might be I need to come up as high as five foot, or it might be I need to use a couple of little shot and just pop it up a couple of inches. But experimenting is the key. And like I say, rather than tying loads of hook lengths up, all different lengths, I'll tie using the spools, three foot and five foot, and I can adjust them as needs be. Another great little winter tip is use a watch. You know, I mean, not, it's not the most expensive watch in the world or the most fashionable, but it stays in my fishing kit. And all I do is every time I cast out, just 
make a note of the time and I'll just look for time for bites. Now, I want to match literally a couple of pegs away from where I'm sat today and every single bite came between 13 and 15 minutes. So I knew after the sort of third or fourth fish I'd had that that was the bite time. So I didn't want to be reeling in after 10 minutes and once it got past sort of 15 minutes then I could reel it in and have another cast. But you can learn a lot just from timing your bites. It just gives you a pointer how long to leave the bait out and like how many casts you should be making during a match. Well, I had two or three chucks with that little light lead on that shorter line which I talked to you about. Just put a heavier lead on so I can go that, into that area where I haven't been fishing, that, what I call like a safe zone. First chuck, it's actually been out there 29 minutes, which just shows, oh, it's come off and I don't believe it. Gutted. Right, here we go, take two. This one's been out there 22 minutes. Again on the 18 inch hook length and again on that longer chuck. So I had two or three casts with a light lead and then I've just gone, put the ounce square pair, ounce guru square pair on. Probably gone 20 yards past where I was fishing and I've had two bites in two chucks. To me, that just sort of shows the importance of leaving that safe area. If I'd cast to sort of the maximum of my casting range straight away, all I'd do is push the fish out of my swim. So by starting short, nicked a nice fish early and I've had two bites in two chucks in that area I've left alone. I've also made a little change, whether it's made the difference or not, but it's got me the bites. Rather than using the little bit of yellow pop-up, I put a little bit of pink in the middle. You know, I mean, it, it might just be coincident, but it's definitely not done any harm. I haven't messed around so much with the actual depth of the pop-up, because I had that bite early on 18 inch, and I'm not getting any liners, it's just literally a case, cast it out, leave it and basically wait for a bite. So the last two, 29 minutes and 22 minutes, that says to me the fish aren't moving around a lot. It feels a little bit bigger. I'm taking my, after what happened with the last one, I'm taking my time a little bit. That is one key thing at this time of year. When bites are at a premium, there's no rush to get the fish out. Take your time, make every fish count. Right under my feet now. Just by lifting the rod, it just disorientate the fish a little bit now because I've been playing it on that low angle and it should pop up fairly quickly. It's a nice looking common. A little bit bigger than that first one it looks. Not a massive fish for this lake, but a very welcome one all the same. Just pinged off its fin then. I had that heart stopping moment where I thought it was going to be take three. get them under the rod top, just take your time. When you're waiting 30 minutes for a bite, you can certainly spend the next five minutes playing it. Here we go, there we go. A nice common. You can even see the little bit of pink pop up was in the bread sandwich in the carp's mouth. Probably not much bigger, but still a nice bit of a chunky little common. Just nick that. There you go, you can see the pink pop up what's left. Obviously the bread sandwich is either side of that, that pink just gives it a little bit of an extra visual colour. There we go. There we go. Nice chunky common cart, probably only four and a half, five pounds, but it literally feels like a block of ice. But what it does go to show is just how good bread can be on a cold day. So next time you're struggling or you're desperate for a bite, give the bread a go and you could end up with a fish like this.